All right, well, I'm machining gearbox castings today. I've got them bolted down to the mill table, and I'll show you here in a minute just to kind of give you the give you the overlay of it. I've got both halves bolted together. I've got it propped up off the table and then bolted down. I've already bored through the first bore, and I'm working on the second one right now. Uh, I've got spacing and everything hopefully right for the chain drive, so I don't have to put an idler on, but if we do, once it's all said and done, we will. These are my bearing bosses or my bearing holders and on the top portion why they set down in the gear case and then there's a cap that goes on top. I could have taken and just used the axle caps that, that came with the with the bearing sets that are just a set of trailer bearings. I don't remember the numbers now. I've given them someplace and I'll try and remember put them in the, in the description down below. But um, I've gone ahead. We've got them turned to a rough diameter. They could have, you know, they're just a bearing housing. So what I think I'm going to do is go ahead and uh, once I finish boring the, the second hole and I bore them all the way through so they're parallel and in line, I've got just a little bit of play on these bearing housings. I think while I've got it set up and bolted down here and indexed in with the digital readout, I'm going to go ahead and uh, drill and tap the four holes in each of these bearing bosses on the top half. I'm just going to use a digital readout with a bolt circle and you've seen me do that before so it's not a big deal. I'm going to go ahead and drill and tap them so they're ready to go. Then when I flip it over I need to build the shafts for them first. I think what I'm going to do is go ahead and build the through shafts for on the, for the, to carry the gears and then I'm going to drill and tap these with them assembled and kind of let them self align in the bottom half of the, of the uh, bearing housing is the plan to do it. So let me bring you down here. I've just taken my cheapy boring head and uh, Steve Chastain in the book they call for just or he calls for just taking a piece of three quarter inch material and and um, cutting a hole for the for the uh, cutting bit to go through and then holding it in place with a set screw and then just tapping it to advance it to get your diameter. I'm using my boring head. One of the things that I do think is kind of interesting we've all got um, basically junk tooling laying around. If we bought any used tools, acquired used tools, something like that, well we've got things things like boring bars. And the boring bar that's set up here, um, I didn't have anything that was really heavy duty enough or long enough to fit in this boring head. This has got half inch holes in it. So uh, what I ended up and did is I got to looking through my scrap stuff and I had a lantern style tool post that had the boring bar fitting for it and I had a three quarter inch boring bar through it. Now I haven't used that for probably at least ten years, you know, I mean it came with a with a Sheldon lathe when I originally acquired it and I just, I probably have used it once or twice, but it's never been a piece of tooling that I really was excited about. So uh, it had a three quarter inch boring bar and it was, oh I think it must be about a foot long, 12, 14 inches, something like that, and it's just got a carbide bit in the end of it. I originally was just going to cut it off and turn the turn the shank to fit up into the boring head. What I ended up and did was just took another piece of three quarter inch stock, in this case it was a piece of stainless steel. I went ahead and threaded it and this is the threading set up for the for the end of this bar and this is an Armstrong bar. It's been used and abused but uh, it's got a 5 8 12 thread on it just relieved and it looks like there's a hardened pin whether well, it's a dowel pin or something in the end and it just threads down or screws down in there and that's what locks your bit in. There's another piece that floats in there that rides against the against the bit and this bit's at a 45 degree angle through here so it goes up through this way and um, I just honed that bit put it in there and set this piece of stainless up cut it so it'll reach all the way through and then turn the the other end down to half inch so it locks real nice into the boring bar. Uh, good way to use basically junk tooling. You know, I haven't used it before, probably won't ever, well I won't say I won't ever use it again because I think I'm going to probably build a couple more lengths of this in different lengths and just use this head. Uh, other option too is you can go ahead and build this head and at some point in time when I finish this project what I'll do is I'm going to go back, this is all gnarled up where they've had pliers on it. I'm going to go ahead and clean that up a little bit and we'll just machine a couple of flats on the side so we can grab it with a wrench. Probably do the same thing on the on the upper portions of the bar just so we can easily tighten them down and loosen them. But it's an Armstrong bar, you know, it's a fairly decent quality bar. It's, it's old tooling that's been beat up and beat around, but it's a good use for them. You know, now I'm able to utilize it. It gives me one, one more piece of tooling. So 
Anyway, I'm probably not going to show much of this machining. This is the boss that's already done. I've got it bored all the way through. And uh, our housings fit in there on the top section Why there's a hubcap that goes on top. And that's the way it is. These six holes along here uh, mount it to the molar. This is the upper portion of it. And I did make one mistake when I was setting these up. I intended to have the, the holes on one side and bolt them up from the bottom. So somehow I miscalculated, overlooked that. So I've got bolts on the top. The only problem that creates is with two of these bolts, this one and this one, or this one and this one, whichever ones I use that are facing the molar, I'm going to take those out and we'll replace those with a countersunk bolt and I'll countersink both of those holes. It'll work fine, it's just you can't ac access them without dropping the gearbox out. Once they're together, why it'll never matter. The other things that I will probably do is I will probably find one of the internal ribs, and it'll, so it's probably going to be this one I would imagine, and I'm going to drill and tap that for a pipe plug so that I can oil that top oil the, the top side of that chain drive in there so we can add a little lube periodically to it. The other thing I may very well do is top and bottom where they mount up and I haven't decided if I'm really going to do that or, or how exactly I'm going to do it. I may try and set up and drill and tap these at some sort of an angle so that I can put a grease dirt on there so that I can grease the bearings both top and bottom periodically. So that's kind of the plan. I'm not going to videotape it. I'm, I'm in the mode where I want to get this done but uh, We'll show you pictures, of course, as we as we finish it up, and uh, we'll do a little bit more. So, anyway, hopefully you find it a little bit interesting, a little bit useful, maybe, on setting up a boring bar or a piece of used tooling. Well, we're starting the day off with a little bit of housekeeping today. I'm, uh, I've got the, still have the gearbox bolted down to the mill table, and I actually need the mill. We're beginning the week again, and I was going to finish this up yesterday and didn't get that far, but... Anyway, a little bit of housekeeping to finish up this setup. And I'll bring you down here so you can see. I've already drilled and tapped the gearbox itself on most of the holes on the top hand side. Um, now what I'm going to do is once I get the bottom drilled and tapped, I'm, I'm going to drill and tap that off of alignment from the top. But the next thing that I have to do once I finish this little, little setup and, and break this down is I have to turn the shafts that go through this gearbox, the two shafts. And they're both one inch shafts and we'll go over that when we get that far. But anyway, the inserts, the bearing housings are right here. These are the ones that are going in the bottom. The ones on the top are already drilled and tapped enough to be in position. What I'm going to go ahead and do since I've got the set up already here is I'm going to go ahead and use the bolt hole circle fixture that are set up that I've already got off the digital readout to drill the ones for the bottoms and I'm just going to drill these quarter inch for right now and um, because they get drilled 5 16 coarse so I'm going to go ahead and drill them quarter inch so they're ready to open up to a 5 16 clearance hole and then I'll just manually drill those to where they sit in the bottom of the gearbox by aligning them off of the shaft going through in the top set of bearings that's already there. That way I don't have to worry about misalignment there. They'll be aligned on the shafts themselves. So, and hopefully I'll explain this. Let me bring the camera down so you can see a little bit better. And I'll tell you the conundrum that I have here. Okay, so if we look at these gearboxes, and this is the extent of what my table will handle. Um, when I drilled these, I drilled them off of a bolt hole circle. And on this boss up here, I was able to drill and tap three of them. I still have to drill this hole. I run out of travel. The back of the gearbox runs into the column. So what I've done is I've taken and drilled the three bolt holes that I could. Since it's a bolt hole circle in common, I've rotated it around, opened the holes up to a 5 16 clearance, and then I bolted it down. Then I've went ahead and drilled the last hole in one of these three positions, and I've done the same thing here. I end up with, uh, I ran out of x-axis travel, so I couldn't drill this hole. So same thing, I've taken this housing, rotated it 90 degrees so I could drill the last hole or pilot the last hole. And I'll either just manually index this up once I break the setup down on the table, or else I'll just build, drill it manually and then tap it. Um, I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm just going to remove the this one that's in here and I've marked each one of these to go in their individual position so they're set to fit in one position so what I'm going to do with this is just go ahead and drill the bolt hole circle it doesn't matter as long as it aligns in the bottom half and I've got just a little bit of clearance on these on the holes in the in the uh, main housings themselves So 
so there's a little bit of play in here so what i did is i drilled my bolt hole on these three then i rotated it bolted it down in those three holes and then drilled the last one so i'm going to do the same thing on these other housings and i've numbered them like i say so they go in position so if we go to a bolt hole circle here and we actually don't even have to go to a complete bolt hole circle we can drill one since we're set in position because it aligns in one of the bolt hole positions i'll drill the first one go ahead i've got the drill press set up to open this hole up so i don't have to change any setup here i'll go ahead go over and drill these and um then once I get the two of them done, why I can go ahead, pilot the rest of them, and, and it's done, so they'll be ready to go in the bottom of the house. When I do the caps that go on the top, there's a hubcap that fits on the top. The bottoms just have a seal go up in them. When I mount the hubcaps on the top portion, I'm just going to match drill them off of the, off of the existing housings that I've already got drilled. So that's the way they're going to go together. So the setup will be just drill this hole and as long as it's centered up or somewhat centered up in the bore on the top it should line up fine on the bottom so there's the first one done right there i'm going to take it over open it up and then we'll come back and do the next one And there we go since we're going to index each one of them up individually and drill them on the bottom it doesn't matter if that bolt hole is exact just so they go the same place every time so there's the first one we'll do one more and then we're pretty much done with this part of the setup <laughs> 